members to the 16th meeting in 2015 of the Delegated Powers and Law Reform Committee. As always, ask members to turn off their mobile phones, please. Agenda item one is instruments subject to affirmative procedure. The Public Services Reform Scotland Act 2010, Part 2, Extension, Order 2015, Draft. The purpose of this item is for the committee to consider its approach to this draft instrument. The committee will have seen the relevant paper and correspondence. The issue before the committee is whether it is content that no consultation exercise has been carried out to inform the Parliament's consideration as to whether this draft, draft instrument should be approved. By way of recap, Section 1344 of the Public Services Reform Scotland Act 2010 provides that Part 2 of the Act will cease to have effect on the 1st of August 2015 unless it is continued for a further period of five years by order. The purpose of this draft order is to continue the effect of these provisions for another five years. Part 2 allows the Scottish Ministers to make orders to add, remove or change the functions of public bodies to improve efficiency, effectiveness and economy and to remove burdens resulting from legislation. The powers allow significant restructuring of public functions to be achieved through subordinate legislation rather than primary legislation. As members will recall, when these powers were proposed, they were considered controversial and a sunset clause with an option of renewal was agreed by the Parliament to ameliorate some of these concerns. The committee may wish to note that no consultation has been undertaken on the draft order and the accompanying policy note offers no justification for not having done so. The Scottish Government Consultation Good Practice Guidance states the decision to consult will be informed by the history of the policy area, the issue under consideration, the existence of any parliamentary EU obligations to consult and the stage of the policy legislative process. The purpose of public consultation on proposed instruments is intended to inform the parliamentary scrutiny of the proposals. This is particularly relevant to instruments which the Parliament is being asked to approve. The Committee may therefore consider that the government's, Scottish Government's view that this instrument did not require public consultation merits further inquiry given the direction by the Good Practice Guidance to take into account the history of the policy area <laughs> and the questions previously raised as to the appropriateness of the use of subordinate legislation for this purpose. With that recap, do members have any comments or observations, please? John. Uh, thank you. Um, yes, I, I do, and I, um, I'm particularly concerned about this. I'm particularly concerned um, that, w given the, the controversy that surrounded this um, some five years ago, that we are not um, looking at it again. I'm particularly concerned at the government's response uh, to our inquiry as to why we are not looking at this again, why there hasn't been a consultation, notwithstanding uh, their own advice, which they apparently have ignored. I mean, if there's a change in policy here, it's the de facto change in policy that we now decide when and when not we are going to, as it were, um, adopt our own guidance. I'm particularly concerned about the tone of the response and wherein it says that it is for Parliament to decide whether the part should remain in force and we do not believe that stakeholders were likely to have any particular views on the issue of continuation. So it's now the government decides that stakeholders apparently are not likely to have a view. I find that very unattractive, almost dangerous, and I think it, this must be looked at much more closely. I know we're going to come on to where we're going to look at that, but it's it, certainly, given the controversy that um, there was around this, it would be entirely reasonable and indeed appropriate that uh, we have to look at how this uh, has worked in practice over the last five years. That is not a big ask. Thank you. Um, Stuart, please. Uh, thank you, convener. I think uh, we should perhaps put this in perspective, that this is a continuation of an existing policy, uh, albeit I think the government perhaps should be invited to look at uh, the processes. And more fundamentally, uh, the changes in policy that are enabled through the continuation of uh, the, 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 the powers that are addressed by this order are of course themselves uh, expressed through secondary legislation. Uh, which uh, comes before Parliament in the normal way. So I think this is slightly unusual, and I think John, while making a proper point, may be over-egging the pudding a bit. I don't think we should ignore it, but I'm not going to take quite... Uh, uh, I'm going to be more measured, I think, in the, the way I respond to this. John? 
Yeah, I mean, I do share uh, some of the concerns that uh, John Scott has expressed, and I think I would like, we, we've had very kind of really minimalist answer so far, and I think at some stage it would be good to have either an official or a government, appropriate government minister, you know, actually explaining it to either this committee or the finance committee, and, um, you know, being, being subject to a few questions just to, to understand the thinking behind it. I, I totally agree with John Mason and John Scott. Uh, right, well, in which case I think from the chair I plainly can't ignore all those comments. Um, one way forward on this would be to invite the Finance Committee to ask those very questions. The Minister, Cabinet Secretary, I think, plus his officials will, because this is an affirmative order, have to go and press it with them. So a very obvious line forward would be for us to write to the committee and as a matter of courtesy to the government, uh, expressing our concerns, as, if, as you just uh, set them out, and inviting that committee to ask questions of the Cabinet Secretary and his officials at the time when they consider it. I think that probably has some merit rather than trying to get officials here. Um, I'm not quite sure on the timescales, but perhaps the more important point is that officials are going to say to us the same things that they've already written down. I'm not sure I'm expecting anything different to emerge, so that may not be valuable. So I think that's my suggestion to the committee. How does that feel? Yes, please. I, I, I would agree in, entirely. And I think what we're really wanting is a, is a justification mm -hmm. for this change in approach. And, and, and is this going to be the approach taken in future? Or is it optional as to when one consults or not? Because there does appear to be a change in approach there. So I'm concerned about that. Yeah. Any, any other thoughts on that? Okay, well, if you're comfortable with that general approach, then the only other thing that I'm going to suggest is that we probably should report this on the general ground simply because it would be rather strange if we did what we just suggested but not actually report it. Um, right, so I'm going to suggest then that we do precisely that. We report it on the general ground that it seems to be a, a strange, uh, unusual process. Is that the words I should be using? Um, Right, here come the official words for the official report. I suggest that the committee reports the draft instruments under the general ground for having failed to meet expectations in terms of consultation. That's, I think, the phraseology, please. Um, otherwise, we'll write to them and the government in the terms that the uh, committee has just suggested. Indeed. Right, thank you. I think that takes us through that item, right? Slightly unusual. Um, agenda item number two, then, is instrument subject to negative procedure. No points have been raised by our legal advisers on the Outer Hebrides landing of crabs and lobsters, Order 2015, SSI 2015-183, nor on the waste, meaning of hazardous waste and European waste catalogue, miscellaneous amendments, Scotland regulations 2015, SSI 2015-188. <coughs> is the committee content with these instruments, please? Thank you. Gender item three, instruments not subject to any parliamentary procedure. No points have been raised by our legal advisers on the Bovine Viral Diarrhea Scotland Amendment Order 2015, SSA 2015, 186. Is the committee content with that, please? Thank you. Gender item four, the Smoking Prohibition Children in Motor Vehicles Scotland Bill. The purpose of this item is for the committee to consider the delegated powers in the bill at stage one. Schedule to the bill sets out a scheme under which a fixed penalty may be applied for as an alternative to a prosecution under the criminal law. Paragraph 8 confers powers on Scottish ministers to make regulations about the application of the proceeds of fixed penalties, the keeping of accounts and preparation and publication about statements of account relating to the proceeds. The proposed parliamentary procedure is the affirmative procedure, given the power relates to the use of public resources. The committee may consider that the justification for attaching the affirmative procedure a power sound when it applied to regulations concerning how the proceeds may be defrayed. However, insofar as the power relates to the administrative matter of keeping accounts, the committee may take the view that it would be an effective use of parliamentary time to require this power to be subject to the negative procedure. Does the committee wish to recommend that the negative procedure would provide a more appropriate form of scrutiny with regard to the administrative matters in paragraph 8b? Yes, we do. Thank you. Is the committee otherwise content with this power, please? Yes. Thank you. Um, is the committee content with the other powers in the bill and the associated procedure? Yes, yeah, thank you. Uh, at which point I think I can close the meeting with the knowledge that the next meeting will be next Tuesday. Thank you.